This segment is brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. See, now, didn't you like that? I the rest of the story, it. Elvis, you know, when he, was, he, when he was very young. Now, I also got to tell you that I, I kind of did a little more looking into that. And Elvis uh, recorded that song on a 78. 78 RPM record. That's what yeah, they had. Yeah, for, for you kids who, yeah, look in the antique stores and you'll find, yeah. yeah. And actually, the, because the, the song My Happiness, of course, was his mother's favorite song. So he recorded that as a birthday present for, for her. Well, the Presleys were poor and they didn't have a record player. So they went to a friend's house that did have a record player. They played it. And of course, Elvis' mother was just, you know, very, very grateful. And they left. And they left the record. Okay? That record stayed in that family for six decades. Wow. Now, it came out in 2009 in an auction. And that record, a 78 record of My Happiness, which he sang a cappella, by the way. Sold for three hundred thousand dollars. Wow! Yeah, isn't that something? Yeah. Well, my friend Alan Blasco, his mother wrote the lyrics, and his dad, of course, was the. Um, um, they had the publishing company. Um, Betty and uh, Lou Blasco did, and Alan is a performer. He's a professional musician. Performs with the band River Rock. Mm. So they're in Kansas City a lot. I think every weekend, and I've heard Alan do that song. Uh, many times, and it he's always very emotional over it, um, you know, because that song meant so much to his family, and so it's it's really, yeah, it's what a wonderful story. <laughs> I'm so glad we got to share that with us. Yeah, that's fun. It, it is. really is, and, and we should we should start thinking about, and now the rest of the and story. And now the rest of the story. <laughs> and now the rest of the story, yeah, this this great segue into Tumbleweeds. <laughs> <laughs> Tumble and Tumbleweeds, there's a song about there's that, too, song, of course. There's a song, exactly, yeah. Songs of Pioneers, of course. Of course, you know, they great uh, cowboy band song to the pioneers that who thought you could take tumbleweeds and make something that pretty out of it, but they sure did. And when I was researching, um, talking about uh, the tumbleweed story, um, the lady in southwestern Kansas who is now selling tumbleweeds online and everything, you can order tumbleweeds. Can you believe that? People actually using tumbleweeds for wedding decorations, but I guess if you live, you know, and Cowboy life, maybe that would be appropriate. I don't know, yeah. but how would you put one though on your wrist? Corsages, tumbleweed corsages. Gotcha. Brilliant. <laughs> that is brilliant, Frank. Let's take a look. <laughs> In the black and white television world, many of us grew up with, there were a few images that set the mood for the shootout at high noon or the train robbery. The saloon doors creaked as they swung in the wind. Boots with spurs clacked and jangled on wooden sidewalks, and tumbleweeds blew lonesomely across the dirt street. As iconic a symbol of the American West as it is, the tumbleweed is not native to the high plains of Kansas. It arrived, most experts agree, with flax seeds imported into the Dakotas from the Ukraine in the late 19th century. The Russian thistle then proliferated throughout the West. Roy Rogers and the Sons of the Pioneers secured the plant's place in Western folklore when they recorded Tumbling Tumbleweeds in 1934, romanticizing the invasive species. As is the case with nature, the tumbling has its purpose. It is the plant's way of spreading its seeds. After drying, the main stems of the Russian thistle can break off at the ground level under windy conditions, which exists most of the time on the high prairies. The plant skeletons will usually persist for at least one year and are typically found along fences and ditches. The plant requires very little water, another characteristic that suits it well to the American West. A large tumbleweed can produce 100,000 seeds. Some animals feed upon these seeds. Quail, ground squirrels, pocket and white-footed mice, prairie dogs, kangaroo rats, and mule deer. Livestock, on the other hand, face dangers of poisoning since nitrates build up inside the plant. It appears to be naturally impervious to weed killers like Roundup, putting it in that category with other pests that will likely survive nuclear holocaust. If you don't naturally have tumbleweeds, you may order one or more 
from the Prairie Tumbleweed Farm in southwestern Kansas. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter.